Hi friends, I'm Golda Rose and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Golda Rose and in today's video, I'm going to be talking to you guys about hard skills versus soft skills and certain soft skills that I feel like engineers as well as anyone in the workforce can really grow or what they should grow in order to be successful in the workforce. So let's go ahead and get started. And before we get started, I just wanted to remind you guys to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe because I do post videos every single week. So to start things off, I am wearing, you know, my business kind of I would say business professional, business attire, um, because this week I've actually been filming for work. It's pretty cool, huh? So my work is actually creating videos for outreach and I got asked to be in them. So I dressed up and I went and I filmed and then that kind of inspired me about, um, you know, creating this week's video. And so that's where the whole like soft skills versus hard skills is coming in. So just to kind of define what hard skills are versus soft skills, if you don't know, then hard skills are the kind of teachable concepts that we can learn. So math, reading, writing, you know, the ability to use your phone or your computer, whereas soft skills are more the skills that make us a good employee, the ability to kind of work well with people, communicate, etiquette. Um, they're still teachable aspects, but it's basically the traits that make us a good employee. Another like way to differentiate between hard skills versus soft skills is like the soft skills are not subjected like they're not different depending on your job they're going to be the same like are you a good communicator are you organized things like that so something to keep in mind before we get started so i feel like we all kind of know that stereotype or have kind of heard that engineers are not good communicators you know we're shy we we're just very like technical focused so that is why I think my number one top like soft skill that I would recommend developing and really focusing on would be communication. So while you can be like a subject matter expert and you know all the technical aspects of one thing, you have to be able to effectively communicate that to someone who has no idea what that technical side is. And being able to do that in a you know nice way is really important. So overall, having good communication skills is super important. While we have our degrees or you're in school and things like that, really focus on that. And I know there's like trainings that certain jobs might offer. I know there's ways that you can practice to really hone in on that. Even if it's like, you know, taking another elective outside of your core courses to focus on communication and presentation skills, I think would definitely be beneficial. So that's just my advice in terms of like my top, like number one soft skill, because I feel like that's one thing that's set me apart from my peers is my ability to effectively communicate and put myself in the shoes of you know someone who might not have that technical knowledge but still like not go over their head or not be you know condescending because they don't know it but really show like look this is like the steps that we would take kind of giving it the 2000 foot level and if they do want more technical aspects definitely go into that but overall learning to communicate during an interview, a presentation, even just talking to your peers and professors is really important when it comes to, you know, developing your career and joining the workforce. Next up for soft skills would be problem solving. I know it kind of sounds counterintuitive. We're engineers, we solve problems, we design to solve problems and all of that. But when it comes to problem solving in the workforce or in your job, it might not always be technical and it might not always be related to your project or your tasking. When I mentioned problem solving skills and developing those, it's really figuring out how you can deal and overcome challenges. So if it's an administration thing, or if it is a technical thing, or if it's, you know, we need a resource and I like, I kind of know how to do this here. I can step in and try and help. Or if it's managing a project and something's going wrong, learning how to adapt to that is really important and solve that problem without, you know, delaying. I mean, best cases without, you know, delaying the project without costing a lot more money. Um, and without, you know, needing to do extra stuff, um, but really using what's around you to solve that problem. So that's what I mean by increasing your problem solving skills. So while it does seem, you know, counterintuitive, like we know how to solve problems, that's what our, you know, job could be around as an engineer. Um, learning to solve other types of problems might not always be technical, but learning how to solve them in the workforce is really important and can ultimately lead to having your projects or your businesses or your or kind of team dynamic 
run a lot smoother. So next up in soft skills would be organization. Now you can keep your personal space you know, disorganized or, or have it be a certain way. But when you're in the workforce, staying organized and keeping that professional kind of environment is really important. Be it your desktop or, or any type of, let's say, um, shared folder or any type of, you know, document organization system, your company might have something in place, but if you have your own kind of way that you organize, let's say you, your company does not have a document or some type of organization system in play. If you keep your things organized and you know, if someone comes to you and they want to find a certain document, you can go, okay, this is where I filed it. Let's go ahead. Let me pull it up for you. Whereas if you have everything scattered, then you wouldn't be, you know, a reliable person for someone to come and ask questions to about a certain document or about whatever, um, just because you're disorganized. I don't mean that you can't be a successful employee if you are disorganized. I just find that life is kind of less stressful when you are organized and that's in, you know, your personal life as well as your work life. But I'm more focused on like the physical organization that you would have at your office or during your job. Um, when you think about it, like SolidWorks designs and creating assemblies and doing that, having a good file name is super important keeping track of all that and where it's filed is super important or else you could break links. So keeping, you know, that organization is just a kind of an example that I feel like a lot of you guys can relate to. Besides that, just keeping your spaces clean and keeping your, you know, kind of things in check um, alongside, you know, getting your tasks done is super important. So hopefully you guys understand. I know everyone likes their spaces and things organized differently, but I just wanted to give you guys a couple examples of how I, you know, focus my organization at work. Another soft skill that I find definitely helps in the workforce is teamwork and leadership. Now, as an engineer and, you know, a lot of people in the workforce, you're going to be interfacing with a lot of different individuals. I know for myself personally, I work in a lot of different teams with a lot of different people. So understanding a good team dynamic and how to work alongside people in a positive way is really important. That kind of goes back to communication, but teamwork is a little bit different. Realistically, one person cannot, you know, do an entire engineering project, a large scale project on their own. If you are a mechanical engineer, you might need an electrical engineer, a computer scientist, a physicist, mathematician, other types of analysts to, you know, put together your project to make it go from start to finish. So working alongside people in a positive way and not burning any bridges is super important. If you're the type of person who wants to just do everything themselves, then the chances of you like really getting along in a team environment and really thriving in that is gonna be a lot lower. So that's something I would work on if you are that type of person because a lot of projects, you're gonna have to work with people and that's just kind of how it is. That's how companies work and we all kind of work together with you know different teams to get our you know our project done and and basically get things out to our customer or whatever it is so that's just something to think about teamwork and then going into leadership now when i say leadership i don't mean manager so leadership and manager is different you can be a leader and not be a manager so leadership i feel like comes in at any time in your career. And I've definitely learned a lot from employees who are more, you know, experienced, but then I've also learned a lot from employees who are just entering the workforce. So like I said, being a leader does not automatically mean you're a manager. Being a leader is showing that you can motivate other people, that you can motivate yourself, that you can get things done in a positive way and paving the path for, you know, the generations that are coming after you and using your like best practices to, you know, make things better in your organization or your environment. So that's what I mean when I say teamwork and leadership. Working in an environment where you are constantly working in teams to work on a project and to get things done, interpersonal skills are very important and skills that I find are, you know, really good for the workforce. Interpersonal meaning, you know, being able to actively listen and being able to accept feedback is really important. You going into the workforce or even going into a new position or whatever, like things are constantly changing. But if you're going in and you're gonna act like you know it all and you might be technically competent, there might be another method that this company uses to do the same thing. And 
let's say you mess up and you need to get feedback on something, being able to take that feedback in a, you know, you want it to be constructive feedback and constructive criticism, but not taking it personally and getting offended by if a senior, you know, employee or a senior leader has something to say. And I, I personally always like to welcome that feedback because my goal throughout my career has been to not be stagnant. And the only way that you're going to improve is by being able to take that feedback and being able to listen to the people around you and take in, let's say you have a senior employee who has been in the company for 30 plus years is looking to retire. That person will have a lot of tribal knowledge that maybe the company hasn't, you know, found the method to capture. And if you're sitting there listening to, you know, the, the little, little things that they do to get their work done that makes it effective and makes it to where, you know, this is a, a really good way of doing it, but that isn't something that's necessarily documented. Being able to listen to that and take that in and apply it once that person leaves and even before they leave, but ultimately you then have that knowledge and being able to pass it on to the future generations or being able to document that based off what you learned. If you're not listening, you're not gonna learn it. And sometimes it's just better to listen. You're able to take things in, really understand it, digest it, it sounds funny, but digest it and just take everything in, absorb it, you're new. Even if you're not new, you're just trying to learn and grow in your career. Being able to like soak it up like a sponge is super important. Just from my experience, I found that like just being able to listen to people makes a huge difference with your relationship with the person, the knowledge that they're willing to share with you, and just overall your ability to work well in the organization. Um, so like I said, actively listening and being able to handle or accept constructive criticism or like constructive feedback is really important when we're talking about interpersonal skills in the workplace. And last up in terms of the soft skills that I feel like are good for someone going into the workforce and someone as an engineer is adaptability. I think this past year in 2020 has really taught us what it's like to have to be adaptable and have to adapt. There were tons of changes that my team and my organization had to make to work in this environment and to work virtually. And as someone who is not really the best with change, this past year taught me that I have to be open and willing to change that, you know, even though I have my list, that a plan might not go perfectly and being able to adapt and have another plan or a backup plan or some type of other solution is really important. Now, I don't mean that you just have to go with the flow on everything. You want to be smart about your decisions, but being flexible or the keyword like agile is important because things change, requirements change, project like project manufacturers change, project design, hardware, you know, things become obsolete and hard you have to find other hardware. So certain things like that, I mean, a pandemic takes over the world and you can't go to work. There there are tons of ways that we have learned and I'm sure you guys have learned too to be adaptable this past year. So if you haven't already, you know, learned how to be adaptable this past year, definitely try and look into that and really figure out how you can be more flexible with your situation or your environment because that's something that is really important when you are adaptable in the workforce people will want to work with you because it's not like they're going to take advantage of you it's just you're able to find solutions to you know unexpected problems like a pandemic <laughs> And again, if you are quick to adapt and you can, you know, really make something positive out of, you know, what could be crazy challenges and changes, your employers will recognize that and see that, hey, this person is really adaptable. They're an asset to our company. Of course, these are things that like, while you can definitely learn in school and you can learn and kind of practice these in your senior design projects or in like any team environment, maybe during your internships and things like that. Being able to apply those skills in the workforce is really important. So again, just to summarize, I talked about communication, having good communication skills in the workforce, problem solving skills. Not only are you able to solve technical problems, but you're able to solve problems that might arise in your work environment. Next up was organization. Ensuring that you're staying organized is another really good trait to have in the workforce. Next is teamwork and leadership. Leadership not meaning that you are a manager, but you are a leader. 
and teamwork meaning that you can work with a lot of different people you can work in a lot of different teams and you function well that way next up was interpersonal skills so focusing on actively listening and being able to accept feedback and last but not least adaptability being able to adapt to any you know critical changes and find solutions in the workforce so that kind of wraps up today's video again i just was inspired to talk about hard skills versus soft skills because of the things going on at my work right now. And so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Comment down below what soft skills you wanna work on and what soft skills you feel like you're really confident in and you are a pro at. And again, please be sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you really, really like the video, go ahead and hit that notification bell because I do post videos every single week. So I'll see you guys next week.